baby. Hello, nasty. Hello, there. Hello. Hello. I say hello. Hello, hello. friend. Well, hello, little girl. Hello, my treacherous friends. Hello, operator. The beginning of everything. Welcome back, my friends. It's showtime. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Brink of Sanity, episode 401. It's been a long time since we recorded. Um, Mark went on vacation. I got COVID. Mark went on another vacation. Uh, but now we're back. Uh, you we, didn't get COVID twice? <laughs> uh, we'll just alternate. You, you keep uh, having a great life with vacations, and I'll just keep getting COVID. And um, we'll just never do a show again. Okay, cool. Um, so where am I going on vacation next? Come on, hit me up. Um, I thought we, if we, we can get the fans to just like uh, contribute to Patreon and buy me vacations. That's not a good idea? Yeah, vacations and medications. That's what we'll call our Patreon. <laughs> um, so we are, um, how are you doing, Jay? Uh, uh, what's going on? Doing pretty good. Uh, so we got some stuff today. I want to talk about a uh, uh, catfishing scam, uh, some, some new college courses, and uh, a new conspiracy. Ooh. Um, I want to talk about, um, we're trying to preview our topics. I, am ta- I want to talk about a bumper sticker I thought was kind of random that I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about a um, tech billionaires are doing something, and I'm wondering if Brink should do the same. Mm-hmm. And I also want to talk about an update on what is going on with Jay and COVID, um, mostly his COVID outfit. So your update topic is about me. About your COVID outfit, yes. I want to go all. I want to find out what's been happening with your COVID outfit. My COVID. Do you want to lead it with this topic? Yeah, because I don't know what a COVID outfit is. So, oh, you are a liar, um, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> Jay, early on in COVID, decided he had an outfit he would only wear outdoors during COVID because COVID would immediately jump on him when he left his apartment. And when he came home, he would quickly take off this COVID outfit as not to get the COVID germs all over his apartment. Mm-hmm. He was wearing this COVID. Am, am I this true, Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yes. that was my like outside COVID walking outfit. Yes, it's been a while. Um, Jay recently did have COVID, right, Jay? Yeah, I had it uh, three weeks ago. How was the sequel? Oh, it was uh, like most sequels, worse than the first. It was worse than the first. Um. Yeah, yeah. Not much. I mean, I like. I would say the 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 peak of it was about the same. But um, uh, it kind of reset my anxiety. So, like, I went from, like, having no anxiety to now every day I'm, like, eh, full of anxiety. So that that part's been really fun. I do find that, like, so the beginning, the issue with COVID was you were worried about dying, right? Or long-term health issues. Yeah. And now you find people who are, like, just had it. And you're, like, how was it? They're, like, "It it it was really bad. I don't, man, people should be taking this more seriously. And you're, like aren't you just totally fine right now? Yeah, but you should have seen me for those two days when I was sick. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I am worried about the long term. Like, last time I got it, uh, a couple months later, I got mono. So oh. now I'm worried about getting mono every six months after COVID. So that'll be fine. Um, does everything that happens after... I, we're going to get anti... I, everything that happens after COVID uh, going to be a result of COVID? Oh yeah, if I if I die thirty years from now, I'm gonna be like, God damn COVID, or maybe the vax, one of those two. More importantly, what happened to your COVID outfit, Jay? You used to wear a COVID outfit, mm. an outdoor COVID outfit, and what was the idea behind this outfit? That all the germs would be on the outfit, and then I would take the outfit off and leave the germs there. Did you at the time believe? And we all like, um, it was a hard. The lots of things were coming in the news. No one knew exactly what was going on, and COVID initially was it seemed like it was more deadly. Um, and we weren't sure how it spread. Did you believe that if you kept an, like the like the germs on your shirt would infect you? Yeah, I figured it was airborne, and if and maybe it settled on my outfit. I mean, weren't you doing shit like spraying stuff when it got into your apartment? Like, no, no. Well, I, you don't even wash your hands, so uh, <laughs> I don't. Wash my- but actually, my wife was. I mean, she is like hardcore about having the kids like use. Uh, what is Sanit- antiseptic? Uh, what is the the hand what's stuff you run? Rubber- what's up? Hand sanitizer. Yeah, hand sanitizer, which I don't think is actually even good for you. But she's like insane about like having the kids. Like the kids do anything. They're like 
they were just outside for 30 seconds. She's like, put hand sanitizer on. They're like, I didn't touch anything. Doesn't matter. You got to put it on this is <laughs> until today. Like just, she keeps doing that. Um, but um, we never rubbed on our, did you ever wash your food when you came home? I mean, I always wash like vegetables and fruit. Yeah. I don't mean like you wash fruit in a normal. I know in the beginning of COVID, people would buy food from the groceries and from the grocery store and then like wash it down. I'm not like washing cans of soup if that's what you're implying. No, people people were legit, legitimately were doing that in the beginning. Do you remember yeah, that? No, I, I wasn't doing that, no. I remember there was like a news report like where they were like, someone touches these frozen steak um, in their supermarket. Eight hours later, COVID's still on it. And my theory was that if if that's how dangerous COVID was, we were just going to be dead in like in a couple of weeks anyway. I mean, nobody knew what the hell to do. Anthony, but, um, uh, Andrew said we should be, Jay should become a snake and shed his skin after I go outside. So do you, well, let me ask you, so where is your COVID outfit now? Is there like a museum, like a little like like glass case for it? <laughs> well, with this COVID, I didn't go outside. So, well, the COVID outfit from before was to not get COVID. <laughs> But since I already had COVID, I didn't need a COVID outfit. Well, did you? When did you stop wearing your COVID outfit? When I, did you? Did you do an announcement to the to the like God, like dear United States, the crisis is over. I am not wearing the outdoor outfit anymore. I just yelled it at COVID. I said, "Listen, COVID, retire in the outfit. Stay off me. Um, I'm done with you, COVID. I'm not wearing the outfit anymore." And then Jay strips down naked and gets arrested, and gets COVID. Gets COVID. Um, is your, is the shirt you're wearing currently, was that part of your previous COVID outfit? No, it was like a, a hoodie and sweatpants. Okay. What was the, what were the, were there certain colors that were better for like keeping COVID off you? Yeah. Gray. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It was very original, very original outfit. <laughs> did your, uh, did your wife also have a COVID outfit? Uh, she was a nurse. So those would be the scrubs. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Did you guys ever make out in your COVID outfit and her nurse scrubs? Well, I wouldn't even go in the same room for like a month. I guess you're like, I went to a coffee shop. You dealt with, oh God. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she was like literally carrying corpses. So I was like, I'm going to sleep in the other room for like a month. No, yeah. offense, no offense, but like, I don't even want to be within 30 feet of you. You're like, they're making me go into the office. And she's like, you don't know what I've seen today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so anyway. Anthony uh, really wants to get to his question that he submitted. So he. What's his question? Oh, okay. Okay. Anthony's question um, was a very good question today. He asked, how is Mark feeling about the debut of Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> I have to say. It is such a goddamn kick in the god in the nuts being a Jet fan. It is one of the most, as far as being a sports fan, there's not much as painful as being a Jet fan because of the highs and lows or like the way they set you up for failure. Do you remember 1999, Jay? Yeah, that was when we were all going to die of Y2K. Okay. Um, did we? No, we partied though. Okay. Like so it was 1999. In 1998, the Jets were 12 and four. They were a really good team. Mm -hmm. They lost in the playoffs and coming back in 1999, the general theory was the Jets were Super Bowl bound. They were one of the favorites. They were, they had a great team and they were led by Vinny Testaverde. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened, Jay? Well, no, I know they didn't win a championship. No way. <laughs> um, so that year, in game one of the season, mm -hmm. it's the second quarter. Vinny Testaverde, there's a fumble. Vinny Testaverde goes to pick up the fumble. No one touches him. Do you know what happens? I'm going to guess the season was over. He tore his Achilles tendon. Mm, there we go. His season was over. So were the Jets. Jets hopes. Fans, a, what a wild <laughs> kick in the goddamn nuts. So... 24 years later, who's in the who's in the stands or who's at the game? Vinny Testaverde. <laughs> so it's Vinny's fourth, fault. Fourth play. Goddamn. 
fourth and leading up to this, for people that don't, maybe you're not a big Bound football fan. The Jets had last year, they had everything but a quarterback. And their offensive line is not great either, but like every other position, they have good rate, really good wide receivers, really good defense, everything else. All they needed was a quarterback. They brought in Aaron Rodgers, who is arguably a top 10 quarterback of all time. He is a all time great going to the Hall of Fame. A little on the other side, he's 39 years old, but he, two years ago, he had, he'd come off winning back to back MVPs. Last year was a bit of a down season, but he was ready, like motivated to just dominate with the Jets. This was going to be the biggest year the Jets have had in like forever, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fourth play in the first quarter of the, I mean, Buffalo had the ball first, then the Jets get the ball. The fourth play, a few minutes into the game. Aaron Rodgers goes back. A guy hits him, kind of, not even that hard. He falls over, and his Achilles tendon has been ruptured. Because the goddamn Jets and Vinny Testaverde, I don't I don't blame him, but I blame the goddamn football gods. It's like they set you up and just it's like it's like the Charlie Brown thing with the football, except instead of moving the football, they hit you in the face with a hammer when you go to kick it. So basically, uh all New York sports are just built on one giant Indian burial ground. I, but other teams, the Giants win the Super Bowl, the Yankees win the World Series, the Mets have had some success, the Knicks are, 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 are really painful, also. But like, this is, I guess, basketball equivalent. This would be like the Knicks being like, hey, look, we just traded for Joel Embiid and his career ends in like the warm up, in warm ups of the first yeah. game of the season. Like basically, he uh, Aaron Rodgers' career might be over, um, and uh, it is goddamn um, painful being a Jet. Jets won the game, but who gives a shit? Because the season's already over, and uh, they need a QB. They have a backup QB who's so bad. Um, somehow they won the game. One of the plays that one of the plays involved him running thirty yards in the wrong direction. Um, somehow he didn't get sacked and got rid of the ball. Uh, we are a franchise that has had a, a quarterback run into his lineman's butt and fumble the ball and became known as the butt fumble. And that's our, that's the microcosm of our whole organization. We're a giant butt fumble. Awesome. That's how I feel about it, Jay. All right. Uh, have you had, do you have you... any, any, any situations in your life that are equivalent to, uh, a Aaron Rodgers disaster? No, I mean, I just got COVID. That's nothing compared to your favorite football team losing a, a player. Exactly. <laughs> so, are, are you familiar with Stranger Things? I am. I've actually watched the show. Uh, I watched it with my wife, and then we I watched it with my son. So, I've actually watched the series twice. So, you remember the character Billy, who was like the lifeguard that was yes. going after the moms? Okay. So, there was, there was a catfish, a catfisher. Catfisher? Catfisher? Scammer? Uh, anyway. Uh, pretending to be that guy. Okay. And he caught a fish. And okay. this woman... Was it, hang on. Just Was was the fish you? Because the story gets so much better if it was you. I mean, he does look good with that mustache. But no, it was not me. So this woman sent him $10,000 and was also convinced that he was in love with her. And so what she did was divorce her husband before she went to meet to see if this guy was real and, and then found out that he was in fact a catfish and now she's out ten thousand dollars and uh ruined her relationship yeah uh... so how does she trick him i guess or how does he trick her people are like Oh, I got a message from that guy in Stranger Things. I bet, of course he messaged me. Why wouldn't a celebrity message me? Right, and uh, and coincidentally, he just uh, he needs money. Um, even though he makes a hundred thousand dollars per episode, apparently he needed uh, money from random fans. Do you know? So, um, I guess related. Um, so the world of AI is kind of crazy. What they may or may not be able to do in the nearest future. Mm -hmm. And they could probably take Billy from um, Stranger Things 
and you put him into AI now or maybe in the near future and have it like be like a video call with him where they have him talking to you, but it's an AI version of him, but you don't know the difference. One of those deep fakes. Yeah. Like it could be a deep fake of Billy. Like it's one thing. So like, she sounds like a moron, but uh, at the same time, like, cause you probably just saw a picture and she's a pretend like thinks it's him. But what if you're doing like a zoom and like on the other side of the zoom is someone that looks exactly like Billy from the, from stranger things. That's something we'll uh, get to look forward to in a couple years, probably. Uh, also, someone told me there's a scam where they, they scan, hackers get your voice and then access your bank accounts by using an AI version of your voice. Makes you never want to pick up the phone again. Yeah, yeah. You got to use the fake voice. Yo, who this? Yeah. That, that's why when I talk to my bank, I'm always like, Hi, this is Mark. This is how I normally sound. This is totally me. They must love listening to 20 minutes of that. Yeah, I'm like, you're my bank. I want to... We go through counting my money. I need it for vacations. <laughs> um, do you uh, do you think you could ever be catfish, Jay? I'm not saying, uh, absolutely not, but probably not. I mean, so you don't think there's a certain celebrity female Asian, um, who could uh, convince you to leave your wife? Well, that's why I said. You know, not definitely not. You uh, you you think you would be able to uh, not be fooled? I probably wouldn't, but you know, who who would who who would be the one that would trick you? I mean, you're you're referring to Olivia Munn. Yes, yes, yeah. So if Olivia Munn, you got a message from Olivia Munn, like if you saw her like via like a Zoom, like would you be like? Okay, this is her. I'm pretty convinced. You know, the Zoom thing might fool me. It's just a pretty good. Like, that, is it that far away from them doing that? Probably. I don't not. know. I mean, they're already. There's Tom Cruise ones all over the place. I don't know how they're able to do Tom Cruise and not other people. I think. Yeah, I'm assuming if they do Tom Cruise, they can do other people. It's not like they're like, how are we ever going to find footage of Olivia Munn? Like, it's all over there. So, like, I bet like the person. And again, I don't know anything about technology, but I imagine the person like can just sit there and talk to you, but they kind of have her features over the generation that that guy's like or that woman's uh, image. So you think it's her, just like the Tom Cruise one, kind of. Right. Uh, Shubnot says, "What if you use AI to body scan yourself? Then maybe you could use it for fake work calls or create porn that you star in." Wow. They are our, our show is amazing. Um, that is both brilliant ideas. So the first idea, Jay, what do you think about doing that? Like, if you could do that for work calls, how amazing would that be? That would be great. Um, I was I was wondering if I could. I mean, this is better to do it uh, where the per, the thing is actually like reacting in real time. But I was yeah. thinking of just recording a like a minute of myself sitting at my desk, like you know, maybe writing something down or nodding my head and just putting that on loop. Kind of like Ferris Bueller's day off where he, he records himself in the, uh, like in the bed, like, and like in bed, like just saying a couple of things, like a little snoring and his parents think he's actually in bed. Yeah. 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 Um, but AI in real time, then you, then it'll be crazy because Jay will have like an AI version of health himself in these meetings. And like, he'll be like, it's weird. I'm getting promoted, but it wasn't actually me. <laughs> right. It does better in my career than I do. <laughs> They're like, Jay, we were going to fire you. We kind of thought you were a moron, but man, in these meetings, your ideas have been goddamn brilliant. <laughs> You're like, I actually can't go to a meeting now. I have to send my, my AI self because I'm not as competent as my AI self. <laughs> Live meetings, I have to like fake a bathroom emergency every time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jay, we're going to do an in-person meeting. Um, um... Um, I have diarrhea. I'm going to do the meeting from the bathroom. W what the hell are you? I, I got to run, guys. <laughs> Jay, I mean, um, it's disgusting that you're doing from the bathroom, but man, that those ideas will save our company 35% of our costs. You're a genius. <laughs> uh, oh, we have an email, thebrinkofsanity at gmail.com. Lorenzo writes, hey, guys, video, ga video game chat call, call – uh, Video game chat back on episode 247 with John from Random S Radio and Rob from the Uncanny X cast. John was raving about Commodore 64 game Sword of Fargol 
one of my favorites also. Has Jay had a chance to play that? Uh, I have not, but I got one of those emulator consoles, and it has uh, the game on there, so I will try it. And he says, how are those two guys doing? Uh, They're both doing good. They quit their respective podcasts, and they're just spending time with family, and they're probably a lot happier. And then we could could do a show with them? Can we do a show? you make that happen, Jay? Are you asking if we could do a show with them? Yeah, why don't we reach out to them and do another show with them? Sure, I'll reach out. Okay, I don't know. Why, why is that a bad idea? Uh, no, it's not a bad idea at all. They're both good guests. I, I okay. enjoy them. On cool. The show. Uh, Lorenzo also writes, happy belated birthday, Jay. Thank you. And he said, I can't believe Mark would miss your celebrations. He also said he would never do that. Oh, wait. Episode 248. There's a whole bit with Mark apologizing <laughs> for missing your celebrations. Wow. I love Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Lorenzo, I won't ever miss your birthday. <laughs> Jay, how was your birthday celebration? I did see Jay the following weekend, though, so to be fair. But how was your birthday celebration? Uh, it was good. It was good. We went. My friend opened up a bar in Midtown called Albert's, and uh, we went there. It was good. Was it accidentally a gay bar again? No, no, I did. I haven't had an accidental gay bar birthday in a while. That's okay. a callback. Yeah, you're going to have to listen to all the old episodes to find that one. If you're as as hardcore of a listener as Lorenzo, and Lorenzo may be the only listener, he would you, you'll you'll know what we're talking about. Um, Jay, I have a question for you. Which career choice would you prefer? Mm-hmm. Um, would you prefer to be a UPS driver mm-hmm. or a professional child? Can you elaborate on a professional child? I'm surprised you didn't ask me to elaborate on UPS driver. <laughs> um, so do you do know, have you heard about how much money UPS drivers are making? No. UPS drivers now, um, at least some of them, with the current there, they had a, a new contract approved, I guess. They're making as much as $170,000 a year. So I'm going to go with the UPS driver. In, um, in, in the other source job I was talking about, mm-hmm. In China, apparently the uh, unemployment rate among young adults is so high that families are hiring their young adult kids to be professional kids for for full-time children. So your 23-year-old who can't seem to find a job Mm -hmm. is now employed as your full-time child doing both helpful stuff for you and just spending time for you in your old years. And they're somehow employed, I guess. But this full-time children thing is a real phenomenon going on in China where people are legitimately saying, that's my job. Well, I'm sure that'll help their personal growth. You know, that that seems like a business plan destined to last exactly one generation and then the whole country's screwed. Like... <laughs> The deadbeat kid who's getting paid to be a kid has no skills and also no money. And if they have kids, like, I don't know, where does it, like, that's it, right? Like, yeah, just... you're like, you're like, um, I see occupations. You work for 10 years as a child. Um, can you tell me what skills you developed as a child? You beat every Final Fantasy game. I see. From the article. Um, so they said, they say, uh, six months ago, Jia Zhang was running her own small business in eastern Chinese province of some bunch of letters that are a Chinese city. Um, but it was hard hit by the pandemic, generating meager profits compared with her efforts. After thorough consideration, I am out. Uh, Zhang, a mother of two who was struggling to balance work with caring for her parents and children. Now she has a new job working for her parents full-time, just being their daughter. In exchange, they pay her 8,000 won, um, about $1,100 a year, uh, $1,100 a month, which is about an average salary in China. My job is to spend time with my parents, for example, taking them to the grocery store and do some household chores. Also, my parents want to go out. I would make plans in advance, taking them to various stores. And what about the kids? Her kids? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I guess, I guess, um, they're in training to become her, their full time child, her full time child later on. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have no. It's the whole story is so baffling. 
Can you imagine also, Jay, can you imagine that you are an adult? Let's just just, just play it out quickly, Jay. Um, I'm going to play your child, Jay. And you play my, I'm going to play your adult child. No, I'm not going to be your full-time child unless you pay me more money. No. I want more money. I am not going to be, I don't, I don't be your child for free. Listen, all I asked you to do was make a reservation at a restaurant and you couldn't even do that. You don't even know well, how to use a phone. I was raised poorly, dad. Besides, if you raised me better, I'd be a better adult child. I, well, this is your life. You couldn't yes, get any I, job. I, you I, couldn't bag groceries down the block. You, you couldn't be like a Walmart greeter. I mean, come on, Dad. I just, all I want to do is I work really hard to get to the point where I think I'm able to go out on my own as a professional child. And all I'm asking for is a raise. You know, you don't even get health benefits, right? Like you can um, get that at Starbucks. Yeah. This is China. I don't know what we get here, but I'm just saying I need more money from you. <laughs> We know nothing about China. I know nothing about China. I'm sure I'm there's like, no they have nationalized... at, at Starbucks. At, uh... I don't know. They could have nationalized healthcare. Maybe everything's great in China. Or maybe you get sick and they shoot you like a horse. Who the hell knows? <laughs> Andrew said the only other alternative is being a video editor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, For those that are new listeners and there aren't any, Jay has dreamed his whole life of becoming a video editor. You'd think there were so many opportunities to become one. But Jay... I'm not a video editor. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Are you thinking about quitting your job and becoming a UPS driver? I decided it would be easier to go back to school and get an MBA and then a CPA and then get an accounting job to be an accountant than it would be to get a video editing job. Oh, I see from this. Um, I see from your resume, you um, you have some. You don't have the video editing editing uh, background, and like you have no time as a professional kid either. Like, what qualifications do you bring with yourself? I mean. I'm pretty useless. I stopped being a kid at 17. Oh, I guess you were kind of a dropout, a failure that career? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a great career arc. Um, yeah, at what point do you get you get too old for that? I guess when your parents are dead? Yeah, I guess. Do you uh do you make an AI version of yourself for the uh for the Zoom chats with your parents as part of your your professional kid job? I mean, that would definitely fool my parents. They're like they're like Jay, we know it wasn't really you. The video, the, 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 the AI on video cared a lot more for us, knew a lot more about us. We know that's not you. <laughs> um, yeah. The, uh, by the way, do you, how would you feel about seeing a porn? Um, going back to the, uh, the question earlier, a porn with you in it. Like the AI version of you, instead of like whatever porn, guy porn star, it's you fucking the model that you're watching. Well, fucking the porn star. Did they also replace the the woman with Olivia Munn? Sure, I mean whatever. You can be any porn star you want, but you get the you uh, would you watch yourself in porn? I don't know if I'd want to watch myself. That'd be weird. I feel like that'd be really goddamn weird. I mean, like it's you like getting blown and fucking like a really hot porn star. That's the porn you can watch instead of watching. Like, do you prefer to watch a porn with a hot girl with a random dude or yourself? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd rather watch with myself, but it'd still be weird. It's also weird to say, no, I prefer seeing the random dude. Yeah. Um, I hate all I hate all these choices. Matt, that's what point of view porn is for. Um, what if we could just have the porn without seeing the goddamn guy? <laughs> Um, so, uh, so a bunch of tech billionaires, Jay, mm -hmm. do you know what they, have you heard of Solada? No. Um, I think I made their name. It's part of California and out in California, it's like a farm type town. It's like a little bit outside of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a decent enough distance outside, but not crazy distance. Mm -hmm. And they, they, some conglomerate was buying up a ton of the land and they found out it was a bunch of tech billionaires who have all pulled their money to buy basically they were trying to buy this town mm -hmm. and start a tech utopia there this is a real story currently going on 
they have to like there's still people that live there and have to like they have to like deal with like the town ordinances and so forth but they are trying the, the what the understanding is they're trying to start a town that'll be based on all the tech industry people's ideals of a utopia and so my question for you jay mm -hmm. is not i mean who gives a shit what the tech billionaires are doing but if let's just say our patreon went up a little bit mm -hmm. come on guys patreon a little bit more like we got billions a month instead of um i think a dollar um <laughs> and we could start i, th I think our we're own up to two what how much do we have to two i think okay awesome um so we're a little bit further along if you guys put a billion dollars in there a month um or a week we would be able to buy our own city mm -hmm. and start a brink utopia brinkville um what we call brinktopia I was going to go Brinkville. I was being modest about the size of it. Brinkville? Come on. I mean, we're going to we're going to you're going to do this. You got to do this. You're not making it like a neighborhood. You're going to make this a town. Okay. I mean, I did City? I, I pictured us buying a block, not like a metropolis, but uh, think big. I like it. Jay, um how about we buy a town the size of where you grew up? You grew up in Long Island, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's buy a buy an area about the size of your town. How many? How big is your town? Maybe sixteen thousand people, twenty thousand people. Sounds about right. Okay, so we're gonna buy a town around that size. How are we gonna make it a Brinktopia? Or I mean, we can we can also have people vote on Brinkville, the, the worst name, or Brinktopia, the better name. I feel like that's uh, already a kind of a biased poll you got going on there. Shubnut wants to know who's the mayor, Mark or Jay? Oh, that's a good question, Jay. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean. Couldn't you, Jay, you could be the mayor and I could be, they can call me master or God. Hmm. Uh, I'm already having my doubts about this plan. <laughs> how would we, what would make this a good, like, like, how do we start a town? What are the things that are making, like, think of a regular town mm -hmm. and how shitty it could be. Mm -hmm. What would make it a better town, Jay? Uh, okay. So what, what are the shitty things about a town that we would not want to have? Yeah. So Jay, you don't like noisy neighbors. Right. So people, I guess, are people not gonna be allowed to talk in your town, your crazy town? Uh every other house is empty. Oh. Why not just space the houses out instead of having like random empty houses? Or that. Yeah. Okay. That. See, like working together I don't know if like working together we're making this better. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Jay was gonna have a bunch of empty houses for no good reason. <laughs> could you build could you, like do we have to put furniture inside the empty house? I guess it's kind of pointless that furniture inside the empty house. <laughs> I was already thinking like, okay, uh, lawns. Lawns. Okay, what do we do with the lawns? Repl replace the lawns. I want something like moss or like turf. Lawns. You want turf? I don't care. Lawns are a scam. I don't want lawns. You don't even have a lawn. Yeah, they suck. I don't want them. Okay. I mean, I'm not arguing that lawns are amazing. Are you saying lawns are bad because they're like bad for the environment? Everything about them are bad. They're expensive. They're bad for the environment. Wait, wait, we just we just spent billions of dollars to buy a town, but we're worried about the price of a lawn. We want everybody who moves in to waste their time, like putting down fertilizer and mowing and watering. It's it's a waste of time and money. It's do you stupid. know that living near green spaces extends your life by a couple of days or something? There's a study recently about this. So yeah, there's, you there's moss, there's trees, there's what do you mean moss? Moss is green like a lawn, only it never grows tall. So you don't need to mow it. Problem <laughs> so I solved the lawn problem. <laughs> So our utopia, do you want to live near our moss? We have moss for you to live there. That sounds wonderful. Or I love looking out on, on mountains filled with moss. Do you this want is, to live in our town? You'll never have to mow. Um, I mean, uh, can't we just hire, I don't know, gardeners? I've got a gardener. He mows for me. Of I never mow. You, of course you have a gardener. Maybe of course I do. Maybe not everybody who moves in can afford a staff. Uh, did you Did you, before this, did you think I had a gardener? Uh, I didn't think about it, but I am, if you asked me, I probably would have said yes. Yes. I have a gardener. Yes. Yes. I are a gardener. And by the way, we were on vacation. Our gardener still came. So I'm sure. just letting you know. I'm sure. <laughs> did, did Part you of the, the staff that works. Did, how much staff do you have that work, works on your place, Jay? Did, did you give the keys to the maid so she can do a clean up while you were gone? No, we, uh, we don't have her clean while we're gone. Cause it's kind of pointless since we're gone. We had her come twice. I mean, apologize. God forbid yeah. you come back to some dust. The only regular employees we currently have are the are the cleaning person once a week and the uh, and the lawn guy. The, the, yeah. So, so it, then we don't have other 
And we have random other people that do things to our house also, I guess, like the gutters. I mean, a- Andrew said Bry for, for mayor. Bry would not want to be mayor. <laughs> Bry doesn't want anybody talking to him. He doesn't want to interact with anybody. Wouldn't there be a good mayor? Like, get out of my face. I'm busy. The first time somebody comes to complain, Bry just quits. I mean, yeah. Um, so what happened with your town? The, um, the mayor, um, someone had a little problem, and the mayor burned the town to the ground. Somebody somebody asked uh, if they can put moss down instead of grass, and Bri just quit. Moss? Why the fuck is there goddamn moss everywhere? Well, that's a, what? a good question from Anthony. How many vacations will Mark be able to take? Um, Just generally, or, or, or now that we're starting this town project? Yeah, you move to uh, whatever we call it. Uh, somebody suggested Negatorville or Mossville. Um. <laughs> You move there, uh, say, okay, if I'm mayor, maybe you're uh, governor or something. Uh, okay, I could be, you know what, you could be mayor. You're you're in charge of the show. You make the show go. I will be, I'll be your deputy mayor. Is that, I'm already letting you be, de- you be in charge. Okay, so your okay. deputy, how many vacations are you taking a year? You already take like seven or eight. I mean, I already have a guy, like the mayor running this shit, so I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm going to take half the year off. <laughs> Is it going to be like the show where you just be like, make things happen? Make, yeah, exactly. Like you're, you said you want to be in charge, Jay. Um, make this moss happen, this big moss project. Here, come live here. We've got moss. Our, our town hall meetings are just you coming in with a bunch of suggestions and saying, make it happen and then leaving. Um, yeah, pretty much. I'd be like, could you, could you get this up on the, uh, get this podcast going and, um, the moss, Jay. Um, I don't even know. Is there a store for that? Can we buy it on Amazon? <laughs> I would definitely have to research how to replace your lawn with moss. I don't. I, I guess we. Okay, so I don't even know how we get the moss. Um, what else? So what else is amazing about our, our town? What else besides moss? We've I want, got moss. So I want cart narcs. Okay, well, hang on, hang on. We've got empty houses or or houses spaced apart. And I, I like your I like your idea. So so if the neighborhood that we buy has closer spaced houses are we just demolishing like the middle one and extending the yards yeah but are we extending are we just putting i guess we're erasing the house the the middle houses with moss so I also, by you way, could I, have trees and bushes and flowers and a garden you could have all that stuff too I, i'd say like the uh, the side of my house to the side of my neighbor's house is like 10 feet um so they're pretty close together mm-hmm. and it seems fine i don't hear a lot um i don't like it okay so um i don't want to be in my backyard and like somebody could like just be staring at me i'm gonna go knock on the i'm gonna knock on my neighbor's door later jay says you have to move (laughs) who the hell's jay and what are you talking about i'm sorry you gotta go you're a little too close new town ordinance your house is being demolished and we're putting moss in its place i'm sorry what (laughs) (laughs) okay so what was that that, what was the idea you just had oh i want to hire cart narcs Okay, so I thought I couldn't. I thought I, you maybe mumbled. And I understand what you said, and now you said it again. I yes. still think you mumbled, or I have no idea what you said. Cart narcs. Yeah, you can find them on YouTube. They're a group of people who uh, hang around uh, parking lots of of shopping centers, and yeah. uh, they, if you don't return your shopping cart to the shopping cart return area, they will uh, tell you about how you're being a lazy bones and that you should do that. You know, um, stop and shop by me, pay someone to just get the carts. You're one of those people that leaves the shopping cart in the parking spot, aren't you? No, I just know there's an employee that I know I put it back, but I just generally see the fact that there's an employee who's doing that. Mm-hmm. And you want a random gang of teens to mm-hmm. harass people yes. in your utopia. Yeah. Your utopia so far has people losing, having to move out of their houses. No, no, we're Moss buying this. Oh, we're buying it like a already populated We're buying the town. goddamn town, Jay. That's already we're, populated? We're... Oh, I don't know. I mean, like people, it's not like we don't, there's not like undiscovered land. We have to go up like upstate somewhere and buy land, buy like a town. Like that's what the, these rich people are doing. They're buying a town. People live in this town mm-hmm. and they're going to like try to take over the town and make it a utopia. Nice. They're not like setting off dynamite and starting from route like zero. Well, my theory is that if you don't shame these people that they're emboldened to keep leaving their carts out there, <laughs> I think if you get shamed once or twice, you're going to start returning your cart on a regular basis. So I actually think it's more efficient. Sir, sir, um, I've noticed that when you're pitching this to people, um, your third item involves 
people harassing people about carts. This is not a great sales um, ship. This is not a great way to sell people wanting to live in this town. We, people have to want to live here, Jay. We and so far, you said moss. Well, I mean, we want people, but we don't want lazy bones. You said moss, less housing, and people to be like, dude, put your cart back. I was, I was, go I was putting the groceries in my trunk. Sure, you were asshole. I mean, I would like to say more spacious yards, no okay. watering or mowing. <laughs> And, every, you, and everyone's way, did, respectable and puts their carts back. So far, this sounds like a utopia to me. So moss, is it is it a plant? Okay. So it needs water, right? Not a lot. Like, rain's enough. It rains enough? Okay, our utopia has plenty. What if we're No, we, we bought a town where it never rains. We, we bought a town in the Sahara <laughs> Desert. Um, you know, in California, it doesn't rain a lot. So uh, I guess we can't buy a town in California anymore, Jay. What part of the country are you buying this town? Uh, well, I don't want it too hot. That's not a utopia. Okay. So, like, where? So, I guess the south doesn't work. No, it definitely doesn't. That's, it's too hot. Okay. So, where are we buying the town? You're, you're the mayor. Um, I'm just the lowly deputy. Where's our town, Jay? I think upstate New York sounds good. Oh, cool. So, like, I'm going to slosh through snow, and, you're, um, and I'll never see. Uh, so, six months of the year, I won't even see the moss because it'll be covered in snow. Great idea. Not like Buffalo. I'm talking like when I, when, when New Yorkers say upstate, they mean like 30 minutes north of Manhattan, even okay. though it goes up like 10 hours. <laughs> That's what we're I had to say. So I grew up in, uh, in Rockland County, mm -hmm. which is like 30, 40 minutes north of the city. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would talk to people when in college, I met people that live in like Westchester, which is slightly sat. Like, I guess Westchester is, what do you say? Like uh, east, of, west of the city, southwest of the city, north. Westchester's north? Do you think Westchester's south of Manhattan? Not south, but like west of the... Th I don't fucking know. I mean, south of Manhattan is is like... Long Island? Long Island's like kind of south of Manhattan. You need or to look east at a map, man. Holy... I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where anything is. If you look at a map, I could put Texas at like where Idaho is. I just don't know anything. Long Island is east of Manhattan. South of Shit. Manhattan is when you get to parts of south jersey and then you know below that's like virginia and yeah i know that i okay. know that hey did you know the population of um long island i i looked this up recently i was kind of shocked by it that's why i'm bringing it up and I people know i know everyone listening in australia wants to know the population of long island i'm gonna guess like 15 to 20 million no holy shit that's not like that that seems like, a, like you're like a billion people live there? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so, so and the, when I say Long Island, like I'm including um, the actual physical island. So I'm including Queens and Brooklyn as yeah. part of the island. Yeah. Um, it's 8 million people. A third of the entire population of New York State live in Long Island. That's a lot of goddamn people live on Long Island. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a lot. I said, do you have any ideas for this utopia? Yeah, I was going to ask the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so first of all, I would not have 8 million people living there like on goddamn Long Island. That would be insane. Yeah, definitely. Um, how about everyone gets free dry cleaning and free laundry service? That would be a utopia. Like every day I'm like, I don't need to use the washing machine. The town provides laundry service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That seems to be better than your... Uh, we'll go back and forth. I'm going to see who has better ideas. So far, my idea is so much better than your moss idea. Uh, free parking too. No parking meters. Cool. I have to normally pay to park at my house, but um, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, well, people don't free parking in... at my house. Wonderful. People who don't live in Richie Rich areas might have to pay for parking. I, th I think there's gonna be a Richie Rich area. You're apparently taking away half the housing by like because you need space between the stuff. But I'm I had to pay apparently to park there. Um, I have to pay okay. for parking. You have to pay for parking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I, I'm we're talking about houses. Not many people have to pay to park at their house. Um. Okay. So. I'm giving laundry I'm service. also talking about when you go to the shopping area. There's no... You have to pay there. to shop? Yeah, if you go to White Plains, you have to pay for, like, the parking lots there. What kind of shitty area do you live in that you have to pay to do everything? Well, I don't live in White Plains, but it's, it's like, 10 minutes from me, and there's a mall there, and there is a paid parking lot there. Okay, so my, my next thing in my town would be no malls. I goddamn hate malls. We're going to ban malls from our town. 
Are um, you banning chain stores or just malls? Yeah, screw chain stores. Except for Starbucks. Everyone loves Starbucks. It doesn't really matter what you're... No matter what you're feeling on, on chain stores, everyone loves Starbucks. Well, you got to have a Taco Bell, too. No, you don't think you have to have a Taco Bell. I'm no not, Taco Bell, Jack. I'm not we're gonna have an local, area without a Taco Bell. We're going to have local taco places that are going to be better than Taco Bell. Mm. Maybe yeah. I'll have a, a secret Taco Bell in Town Hall? No, I don't think so. I don't think. I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm putting my foot down as a deputy. You can do whatever you want. Whatever weird shit with moss you want, but we ain't getting a Taco Bell. Do you know that some Taco Bells still have the chili cheese burrito? I didn't know they, they don't, actually. I, how often do you go to Taco Bell, Jay, that you're up on the menu? Uh, I don't go very often, and the, all the ones near me do not have the chili cheese burrito, but I found out that there's, like, a couple hundred locations that do. And a couple hundred locations. And, and this summer, I will go to every location. And somebody made an interactive map so you can find every Taco Bell that still has the chili cheese burrito. Do you know the name of that person who made that map? Jay? <laughs> no, I was gonna say the I was gonna say the guy that owns your building probably. <laughs> um the guy who has the probably has the money to actually build this utopia town. Um I am also going to say um everyone gets laundry service, everyone gets free health care, why not? Um and how about um we deliver everyone dinner every night? How the hell are you affording free dinner and health care? If I can afford a town, I can afford all. I can afford all this stuff. We're making it a real utopia. I, I mean, yeah, that'd be a utopia. I don't think it's realistic at all. Okay, but um, also your town with with moss and gangs of hooligans harassing you about carts sounds amazing. Moss is virtually free, and the oh. hooligans are going to do it for free too. They do it every for free house. Now. Every house comes with his and her matching COVID outfits. That way, if you're if a pandemic happens, you have the outfit already. Here we go. Every public restroom has a Japanese toilet. There's bidets. Okay. There's bidets. You don't have to touch anything. It's clean. What about for people? Are we going to give everyone for their house also? Yes. I mean, if they, uh, if if we're like renovating the houses, yeah, they're all getting Japanese toilets. Okay. We're starting the up for renovations. Everyone's going to start getting used to this because i'm sick of this whole toilet paper garbage okay so if you elect jay mayor he will literally blow air up your butt andrew wants to know what is the punishment in this town if you go rogue and have a lawn or god forbid a large tree Ooh, wait we can't have large trees in your town i said there's trees you can have trees gardens bushes you can have whatever you want but no grass i don't want grass wow it's you're stupid. pretty strict what if the grass is just growing yeah like what if you're what if I go crazy and build my hive? I'm like, I don't want moss. I'm going to do grass. What happens to How me? How about this? You want a lawn, have a lawn, but we encourage moss. Oh, okay. Because, because so there's, some, already... there's some towns with, uh, uh, what do you call it? The housing? Uh, Zoning? Uh, no, housing authority, the homeowners association. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there, there's those places would not allow you to do these things. So we don't have okay. a homeowners association. And you're allowed to replace your grass with moss. So a little while ago, it was a totalitarian state with where you're not allowed to have grass. Now it's a free for all where you can have grass if you want. Jay's losing control of our town. I think I'm evolving so quick you can't even keep up with. I cannot business. keep up with your town. Your town basically the the moss, the grass. Okay, so what is the punishment, Jay? I'm growing grass, and I'm like, screw you. Uh, grass lives matter. First of all, if you have a lawn, you're not mowing that lawn before 8 a.m. Oh, okay. Now you have restrictions on when I can do my, my, what if I have to go to work by then? Now I can't mow in the morning? No. Motherfucking mayor? It's supposed to be a utopia. I'm not listening to a lawnmower on a Saturday morning at 6 in the morning. I am going to get a gas leaf blower and play it outside your, your bedroom all There's night. no leaf blowers. Absolutely not. How are you going to move the leaves, Jay? <laughs> Goddamn rake. The gas leaf blowers, I, I work from home uh, five days a week, and you and once the fall hits, you hear, like, I wish everyone in our neighborhood could hire one gardening company who will just spend one, or just like, one, like have, just coordinate, we have all the lawns done the same day, but no, every hour of every day during the week, someone is 
doing their lawn or having a gas leaf blower go off it is so goddamn annoying. Could they make those any louder? I don't think they can. You could hear them from like three blocks away. It's insane. It is. They're so goddamn loud. And I, I, my assumption being is that they actually don't have to be that loud. But the guard, but the gardeners are like, yeah, build the wall. Well, fuck you. I'm turning this up. Yeah, it's it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, okay, so um, leaves apparently are just going to be everywhere because no one's going to fucking rake the leaves. Leaves. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, what else? Maybe, okay. Uh, maybe we maybe we should have a designated like do all your loud shit day. I don't know. I, I remember as a kid, like the lawn, like everyone would same thing. They wouldn't mow the lawn at the same time. So as soon as one person finished, the next person would start. Exactly. And you got like nine straight hours of mow, lawns being mowed. It's, re, it, it's stupid. So uh, Jay, you just said you want to have a loud day once a month, kind of like the purge. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to so, play your boom box outside or, you know, just be a completely obnoxious one day a month, just be a month. Okay, so one day a month, Jay, in his utopia, allows the purge to go on. <laughs> Andrew wants to know. I, this... That's a wonderful, I, I, I am excited to live in your town. Um, I might actually not, I might not be, I, I might be on vacation the entire year and not come to your town that involves the purge and moss. Andrew wants to know if, if there's any rules about cars. Oh, okay. So cars, um, are you have a speed limit, Jay? A residential streets, yeah. I think there should be a speed limit. No, oh, how fast? I don't know. What's good? Thirty. Okay. Well, it's gonna take forever to get places, huh? On residential streets, you're already like uh, how far away? Yeah, that from? seems actually pretty reasonable. Actually, I don't know why I made a joke about it. I just wanted to make a joke about whatever you said. We're not doing that. Uh, what are you eating? A halls. We're, we're not doing that. You're feeling sick. A little bit. We're not doing that. Are you going to quarantine? Are you going to quarantine when you're sick from the rest of the town? I don't mean COVID. I mean anything. You've got a little sore throat. Maybe you shouldn't spread your germs in our town. Well, the houses are so far away. I don't know how anybody's going to catch anything. Maybe people should be... Do you think people should have to wear masks when they're sick so they don't get other people sick? I'm not going to force people, but it's encouraged. Okay. So you're encouraging basically isolation. Cool. I'm encouraging people to be respectful. Oh, okay. Our town, the, the people to be respectful in our town, except for once a month where you're allowed to, like, murder, I guess. I feel like you're twisting what I'm saying. I'm not totally not trying to do that. Okay, so I think also our town... Should we, what, what kind of fun events should the town have? I'm going to say the town provides facilities like pickleball, tennis, lots of parks, green green spaces. Basketball courts. Okay. Because I live in a very white neighborhood and there's no basketball courts. I can find tennis courts and I could find pickleball. I cannot find a basketball court. You cannot find a basketball court? Nope. Really? No. Oh. The 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 uh, closest one I found was an eight minute drive, which is like a forty minute walk. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, not great. But you could but you could walk to a tennis court? Yeah, like five minutes. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So our town will have recreational sports. How diverse will our town be, Jay? Mm, only white people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we won't have to change. It's upstate New York, so we won't have to change the population at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, by the way, for anyone listening, Jay is just kidding. Uh, we welcome diversity. Um, I'm, I'm married to an Asian, so it's not like you know. Yeah. Um, well, they they said do you do you do you, this a this Asian take Jay to be your awfully wedded husband. <laughs> They're like, uh, we can't even pronounce her name. I'm not even going to try. Um, do you, um, does she have any friends that uh, they have? Like, uh, I, some Asian people have Americanized names and some have to just keep the Asian name. Does she have any friends that has an Asian name where, uh, you just can't pronounce the name? All her friends have like super short first names. Oh, okay. Like three letters or something, three or three to four letters. So they're all just, uh, very easy to pronounce. Okay, no, that's good. Yeah. That's that's polite of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, in this town, will you make it so everyone has to have names of no more than four letters to make it easier for everyone? No, I, I feel like you're trying to make me sound like the crazy person here. <laughs> name tags make it a very friendly town. <laughs> everyone has to have a name tag. Where is your name tag? And did I see Bill? 
and I call you Bill now, not your real name. Did I see grass on your lawn? You know, it's encouraged not to have a lawn entirely. <laughs> Shivno wants to know if the town has an official religion. Ooh, okay. Jay, what religion are you going to go with? Um, what's your spaghetti thing? Pastafarianism. Yeah. Explain Pastafarian for those that are unenlightened. So that's the uh, also known as the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Basically, uh, this guy said that he was, uh, I think he was a priest. He said he was going to offer a million dollars to anybody who could prove that God does not exist. And so this other person said he's going to give a million dollars to anybody who could prove that the Flying Spaghetti Monster does not exist. And because you can't prove that something doesn't exist. It's just is an impossibility. Uh, so... I don't understand, Jay. How can you not prove that something doesn't exist? He, he Thank ran, you for explaining that. He ran with it. Well, some people need that explaining, apparently. Um, so <laughs> uh, he he ran with the joke and turned it into an entire religion. He made a Bible. I, I have it. It's really funny. Um, the Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And um, it, it caught on. And um, there's people that take their driver's license photos with a colander on their head. And um, <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, that guy's amazing. That's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the official religion of the uh, of the Brinktopia. Um, I would rather not have a religion, but if we're gonna have one, it would be Pastafarian. Okay, you go back and forth on this. You're like, if we, I mean, people shouldn't have grass, but if they have to, um, are you gonna separate church and state, Jay? Yeah, yeah. What about abortions? Are they gonna be allowed in your town, Jay? Uh. No. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Jake's like, God damn, this is a serious question. I have I no know. idea what my view is on this. Uh, What's your view on abortions on the man, Jay? Yes. Yes. You're going to encourage people to have abortions. I'm not encouraging. They're allowed. Just like, You're allowed to murder children? Great. Is that, is that just on the purge uh, day? I'm uh, uh, pregnant. You know, we encourage abortions in this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just letting you know, if you don't want to keep it, there's plenty of options. Now, you should keep it if you want to, but if you don't want to, there's many. You could do it during your lunch break. <laughs> um, but, I feel yeah. like if I am open to suggestions, you say I'm wishy-washy, and then if I make a decision, you call me a totalitarian. totalitarian. So I feel like this is like a no-win situation for me. I'm pretty sure you didn't pronounce that correctly, and neither could I. I know I didn't, and I just tried to move on and hoped you wouldn't notice. Um, That's a hard So I, do you think any people should have uniforms in the town? Well, you want a Starbucks. You want them to not have a uniform? Yeah. I Well, I mean, I didn't mean I, I didn't mean like the people in the shops. I just meant like generally speaking. Like, like sometimes people are happier. They don't have to make a decision about their outfits. If everyone didn't have to compete over clothes, people might be happier. So you want this to be like 1984? Um, I don't think that's the year we're in, Jay. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Is that in the, in in the book they had you wear uniforms? Yeah, I don't think I ever read that book. I read or, it. Like, I, sorry, I never read a book. I read it a few months ago, actually. You did? Yeah. Wow. Oh, why did you read it a few months ago? Do you have you have a, an assignment? <laughs> no, I was curious about that. <laughs> I don't know. It's a classic. I try to pepper in a classic every once in a while. Did you? Can you do me a favor? Can you compare and contrast the main characters in the book? There you go, Shub. The uniform has to be a Brink of Sanity T-shirt. Nothing else. And nothing else. We're just going to be like no bare pants. naked from the no the pants. Waist. <laughs> Jay's like no pants in my utopia. <laughs> just flip flops and Brink shirts. Yeah, if I want to see your balls and vagina in my town or else you're going to jail. <laughs> All right, well, um, my girlfriend's parents got me 1984 for my birthday. I'm not sure if there was a hidden message. <laughs> Is that from a uh, listener or are you just... Yeah, uh, no, that's, that's from a listener. Oh, uh, that was wow. not. What would the hidden message be, though? They're watching you? I mean, that could be a message from a from a girlfriend okay. oh her girlfriend's parents yeah no they're watching yeah big brother's watching that was the big thing in 1984 like big brother watching you yeah i mean the other things also i guess but that was one of the big things yeah you think it was weird what what year is that book published like in the 60s maybe i think the 50s 
So was it weird when you got to 1984 and you're like, when's this all going to happen? <laughs> I know it's that science fiction, not like prediction, but I, yeah, I feel like all the sci-fi stuff thought we would be way more advanced than we are now. I feel like it's just interesting when you live, like you watch something like back to the future when they went to the future and then you got nowhere past that year. Mm hmm. And when they're like not even close to the technology that was there. Not even close. Not that we had to be there, but it's funny. Like yeah. one day we're gonna be like, aren't we in the year of the Jetsons? What the fuck's going on? Where are the flying where are the flying cars and the houses in the sky? Right, exactly. Um I do wish they did they ever do a backstory in the Jetsons to explain why they had a houses in the sky? Like at some point they'd be like, The land was destroyed and there are wild animals that will murder you if you're on the ground. Yeah, that's the secret dark side to the Jetsons. They pan down and it's just eternal fire yeah you see people like accidentally fall and like just fall and like just like a, just it's a series of dead bodies on the ground <laughs> that was the uh unreleased jetsons episode <laughs> one episode they're like yeah yeah why are we in the sky dad well you know that the, like, the ground became all lava back about a hundred years ago and it's just hot lava down there and like the hot lava is gonna get us one day because the rising lava levels that's what happened to grandma so I'm going to say our utopia does not have lava. No, definitely no lava. Do you, what's your belief as far as your, like, like, are you going to have a pure capitalistic society, communism, socialism? What system of, what industry, economics are we going to have? So is this like an independent country? Because you're talking about things that <laughs> are like, why don't we just change the tax law just for our town? I think that's what they're, what are, what are the tech billionaires doing with their town? They're making some kind of utopia. I bet they're going to change the town. I bet. I bet they're trying to take over the town. I think it happens a little more slowly with the tech billionaires, but they are buying all the land, and I assume they're going to try to change all the laws. So maybe they'll have a different tax system there. This is like that Family Guy episode where he makes Pretoria. Yeah, I think kind of. Yes, exactly. You know, if you like, you take a if you're off if you're international waters, you can like set up your own town. Mm -hmm. Well, there was, like, I guess there was if another... we get a, a lot of donations, we can uh, build an island in international waters and then do all this stuff. Why would we do that when there's already land upstate that no one cares about? <laughs> well, we have to abide by their laws. You can't just be like, uh, yeah, we're not going to pay your taxes. We're just going to have our own taxes. Well, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll take over the town. We'll be like, Hey town, here's your chance to move. We'll give them money and then make them leave. And then encourage people to come back once the town's built. Can you move out so we can uh, install Japanese toilets in your bathroom, and then you can come back? When you come back, your your toilet dreams will you'll be in a toilet utopia, um, and there'll be no more grass. That'll be that's that's what you have to look forward to. Yeah, you're. you're By the way, put your cart back, or else that gang is gonna beat the shit out of you. You'll have a state of the art Japanese toilet, and also you might be walking across moss. Yes, yes. The moss is just sounds like amazing. I just like a land of moss all from everywhere you can look. Say and look into it. Moss yards. Would you get rid of the asphalt and just have like no streets, just moss everywhere? Mossopia. Mossopia. <laughs> um, we've, we've, we're naming the town after moss now. This is uh, amazing. <laughs> All right. I think we're out of time. Okay. Uh, uh, we didn't get to half the stuff, which is good because now um, we have plenty of stuff for next week. Can we do quickly two questions that we have from a listener and do them real fast? Sure. We had um, O Run the Jewels wrote, asked us, said, and we're going to do this real fast. So, um, but please, please discuss the state of the United States at the moment. Would you say it is a currently better, worse, or the same than when Don was running things? I personally think it's verging on fars farcical. This Biden shit show is allowed to proceed. Dementia is no joke, man. Um, I, for one, Jay, mm -hmm. do not see Moss really anywhere. So I don't know what the fuck Biden's doing. Mm hmm. I, I remember there being a lot of moss under Trump. I think it's way worse now. It's way worse than under Trump? Yeah. Okay. Why? Uh, everything's <clears throat> more expensive. The, uh, the, the border is open, and it's, like, at an unsustainable level. Um, okay. So James is voting Trump. Okay, next yeah. question. <clears throat> also, as we're approaching the Halloween festivities, 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 festi festivities, <laughs> What are your top five horror movies to end the show? Ooh, that's a good one. <clears throat> Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Friday the Thirteenth. No. No. Oh, okay. I guess we're gonna disagree. I, I don't think Friday the Thirteenth itself is an amazing movie, but it's such a great franchise. 
It is. Um, I would have loved to have seen what the original uh, movies were supposed to be because they came out with the rating system around that time, and they had to edit most of the death scenes. And oh. so they toned, like, all of them down. Oh, really? Yeah, there's that one where he, he gets the woman in the sleeping bag, and he, he like, throws her <clears> against the tree. In the yeah. uncut version, he smacks her into the tree, like, eight, nine times, and they had to, like, cut the rest out. Okay. Uh, um, uh, what about my the movie I thought was the scariest as a kid mm-hmm. was Pet Cemetery. Okay. Uh, it's a good what one. What about um, It? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, the new one or the '80s one? I've not seen the new one. Is the new one good? Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Is it better than the old one? I think so. Oh, I love the old one. I loved it so much. I didn't want to see the new one. To be honest, okay. uh, maybe I'll check it out. Um, what else? Halloween. I mean, it's good. It's not. It's not up there for me. Okay. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. Not one. I really like two. I know it's like borderline like comedic but i really liked it okay i mean one is the clear the real like scary classic but yeah okay. the new one's really good too actually which new one the more like i've it, seen like, some like they because they keep redoing them basically yeah so what, it came out like uh last year or the year before oh i remember the one with jessica beale being kind of i like that one yeah yeah that one was that was a while ago like 15 years ago maybe yeah i don't know like time kind of like compresses yeah. no that one's me. good too like, that one's good too um Dead, other horror Dead Alive. I, Dead Alive is one of my all-time favorites. Dead Alive? Yeah, Peter Jackson does Lord of the Rings. He did insane horror movies before that. And it's, oh. it's the goriest horror movie I've ever made. Oh. It's it's amazing. Um, I've not seen that. But I knew I was going to say before you even said that that Jay's going to say something obscure that no one's ever heard of. There you no, go. No, that, that's not that obscure. Okay. What about um the uh, more recent Hostel? I liked Hostel. Um I like I like the first one a lot. Second one's all right. Um, I like the Saw series better. Okay, yeah, Saw. Is, I would I would say Saw series is better. What about um the uh, what's the one where they they tie they ass to mouth uh, tying everyone together? Human centipede. Yes. Human centipede. Is that a good Halloween movie for the kids? <laughs> the third one was just is ridiculous. The, the, how did you see like how did you even watch the first one? <laughs> I watched the whole trilogy, yes. Oh, my God. Even the preview of the first one makes me want to throw up. Um, oh, no, each one gets subsequently worse. We've talked about that on the show, and I don't want to um, ever think about it again. What about The Exorcist? The Exorcist was so scary to me when I first saw it. It took me, like, years to actually get through. That movie, That's like, a pretty good one. Out. Yeah, I would put that there. And, oh, what's the um, one where they go through the TV? Poltergeist. Poltergeist, yep, yep. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing would round out my top five. Okay. Um, I think we kind of covered all the ones. I'm not putting something like The Ring up there, though. I like The Ring. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paranormal Activity. Those were good. Um, they're also not like Blair Witch. Yeah. I yeah. mean, at the t- the marketing for that was amazing. Like, that was the best guerrilla marketing, like the like just ahead of its time in marketing. It, it started the, the, if for people who don't know, Blair Witch came out when the internet was first starting. They put up all these fake websites with lore about how this was like real, and and people just thought it was like a real found footage movie when it came out. They like the, it was like the first movie to start the found footage um, uh, horror movie ser- concept. And they really, as Jay said, they made it really think like this was like legit, basically. It was so ahead of its time in marketing. The movie itself is not amazing, but the, the marketing is unbelievable. There's uh, actually a uh, Cannibal Holocaust is the first found footage movie. It's, oh. It's from like the 70s and they they make like they um, uh, go to like this island that of cannibals and they actually use actual footage of like, I think, like natives in Africa and they like they kill animals for real in the movie it's like it's really like they kill animals for real yeah in the 70s you were allowed to do whatever the hell you wanted <laughs> like um yeah not great i went to, i didn't know what it was i went to like a midnight showing like pissed drunk and uh and i'm like what the fuck am i watching right now 
It must have been really annoying because they uh like like night, the people that did Friday the 13th they were like if you film this two years earlier in 1978 you'd be allowed to actually murder murder like campers <laughs> right. that would just be allowed. <laughs> uh, the new Evil Dead was awesome. Oh, I did not see that. Really, good. Um, really good. I like the Evil Dead. I saw, I saw one of them, but uh, not the original. Not not the not the more recent one. There's five now. There's, I saw I saw one of them. I don't know. There's so many goddamn movies to see. I just can't see. It. And there's also they made a lot of like horror movies that look interesting but i haven't seen mm -hmm. like that one that was smile where they uh, had like all the marketing was like a like a creepy yeah, smile. yeah 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 i have that on my list i haven't watched that yet um there's i i feel like we're actually like there's actually a lot of really good horror movies that i have not seen that you could see basically yeah, but winnie i'm gonna the put Pooh horror movies coming out what's coming out winnie the oh Pooh. the winnie the Pooh one right yeah i thought that came out already it might have it might have um, Maybe they're doing a sequel to it or something. I'm halfway through Willy's Wonderland, which is Nicolas Cage, and he gets locked in uh, like an old um, Chuck E. Cheese, and all uh, the animatronics are like coming to life and trying to kill him. So Nicolas Cage really needs money. <laughs> He's been pumping out movies. He makes like he, two or three a year. I mean, I, the, the, wasn't the rumor that he owed a ton of money to the government, like like maybe the IRS, and he was just making movie after movie, didn't even give a shit. Oh, really? I think there was something where he owed money and basically he was just like signing on to anything basically for a little while. Uh, I mean, he makes, he's a great actor and he's in some really great movies, but he's also been just in a lot of trash. And Andrew says Wolf Creek, which I have not seen, but I will check it out. Um, what are you going to be for Halloween, Jay, before we close the show? I don't know yet. You're going to be, I have a costume for you, Jay. Mm -hmm. You should be a giant spiced pumpkin thing and then haunt Bry. Because he hates spice pumpkin stuff. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week. If you want to email us, thebreakofsanity at gmail.com. You can follow us uh, YouTube at Brink of Sanity on YouTube and Brink of Sanity 3 on Twitter. I've been making a bunch of YouTube shorts, so you can check that out. Yeah. See you next week. We, um, we'll preview topics that we'll not cover on the show. <laughs> well, uh, that was a spoiler alert for next for episode 402. Sounds good. Or episode 400 if you want to rename this episode. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, or that. Sorry about okay. episode 400. I know it sucked. Bye, everybody. I'm gonna leave.